Hello, I'm Cheryl Meyer, and this, and I'm otherwise known as Cheryl M. Health Views. And what my goal is, is to inspire you to lead a healthier lives. So when I proposed my podcast, I proposed that we present it in two different segments. The first one is it feels good to feel good, future proof your health, where I get to share everything I have learned to return my health back to relative wellness and to live a pain-free life in spite of the fact that I have autoimmune disease. But the second part of my podcast is this episode, and that's tell me your story the health views is in. My concept with this is it's all fine and well that you hear me tell my story, but I get a lot of it's all fine and well that it worked for you, but it's not going to work for me. And I wanted you to hear that there are lots of people out there that have made changes in their lifestyle that have supported their health and brought them back to wellness. We all have a couple things in common. We all owned our own health. Whatever the doctor was suggesting we did was going on on a parallel path to us making these lifestyle changes where we did things that cleaned up our toxic load. We all pay attention to our body. You'll hear jazz in the background because I want you to listen to the rhythm of your health and I want you to pay attention to what your body is telling you. My body had been trying to tell me that I was gonna topple over into toxic load for some time. I just wasn't listening. So if you clean up your lifestyle and if you listen to your body, you have a very good chance not of being deprived in any way, but returning to feeling darn good. And that's what these podcasts are really all about. So thank you for joining me. This is going to be a Tell Me Your Story, The Health Needs is In episode. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that we all inspire you to lead a healthier, happier life. Thank you. Hello, welcome to another podcast of Tell Me Your Story, The Health Muse is In. I have a phenomenal guest to introduce you to today. Her name is Lindsay Kemp, and she was a mother who was on a search to save her child, who was terribly ill at the young age of three. And so I wanted you all to hear her story because it's so awe-inspiring because she found solutions that I want you to hear. And for those of you who've been following me, you know how concerned I am that 53% of our children have chronic illness. And Lindsay is the perfect person to tell you her story so that you don't give up hope if you're one of those moms and that you know there are solutions out there for you. So Lindsay, welcome to my podcast. Please introduce yourself and tell us all about you. So my name is Lindsay Kemp. Um, we live in San Antonio, Texas. Love Texas. Um, so when my daughter was three, she's a twin. Um, they were born full term and um, spent very little time in the NICU. So completely healthy, wonderful babies, fat little chubby babies. Um, they were developmentally just fine and then whenever she was about three sorry you can see all of my work fuel by me um when she was about three we i want to say we woke up one day but it did not happen overnight um it was so so small and little things were happening um but it seemed as if all of a sudden the child could no longer walk every step she took she was in agonizing pain um she had lost so much weight you could see all of the bones in her body if she were you know standing naked she looked like skeleton with skin on and her skin was see-through uh you could see all of her veins um everything her face was completely sunken in uh, she was purple everywhere. Um, all of her joints were completely swollen and red and um, 
I, I like, I didn't know what to do. So I called the pediatrician. She was like, just bring her in. We'll look at her. It's probably nothing like you're overreacting. Um, so I took her in and they were like, oh shoot, this is bad. So they immediately put her in an ambulance, took her to the hospital. And um, of course they went through the whole like child abuse situation and what I was doing and all of that. Um, so we, you know, my husband and I were both interviewed and passed. Um, so they started checking her for a bunch of different things, anything. Um, they checked her for every type of cancer. They took bone marrow samples. Uh, they ran her blood work. They took so much blood that they actually had to get special permission from the head of pediatrics over the hospital because they were pulling so much blood. It was more uh, than her body weight. So, um, and this went on. She was in the hospital for almost a week um, where they just constantly tested her. No answers. So we took her home and um, we got in touch with this rheumatologist who turned out to be a huge blessing to us. She uh, was very much a partner with us instead of just telling us what we were going to do. She came in and said, you know, you know your child, I don't. So tell me about her and I'll tell you from the medical side what I can and let's work together. Okay, so in the process of that, the kid is still very sick, still not gaining weight, still, she was starving to death. She wasn't getting anything. Uh, I mean, she was, she was dying. We shouldn't know why. Um, so they put her on um, oral steroids. She was getting uh, monthly infusions. She was on um, all kinds of um, cancer medication. Um, she was learning. At this point, she was three. She was learning how to inject herself um, so that, you know, we didn't have to do it. And um, she's, she's so calm through this whole thing. Um, but she's still in a massive amount of pain. Um, and she was for about two years. For about two years, we went through every doctor, every hospital, every everything that we could, ran every blood test that was available to us. They built her genome at one point. Um, and there, there's just no answers. And let me stop one second. Did okay. the steroids make any positive change for the child? The steroids made absolutely no change in her whatsoever. She did not gain an ounce of weight, which it was what they were wanting. That's why they put her on them. And to try to ease some of the pain. It did not ease any pain and she did not gain one ounce from that. The kid did not grow, period, for two years. She did not get taller. She did not gain any weight, nothing. She was the exact same size she was at five that she was at three. Her hair started falling out in the middle of all of this, probably as a result of all of the medication, which is to a little girl very devastating. Um, so we, we were at our wit's end. We did not know what to do. We did not know what had caused this. We didn't know if it was a genetic problem, if some kind of environmental factor was the cause. We did not know. So my husband thought maybe he had uh, brought something home from his job on his clothes uh, that was like a heavy metal. So maybe she got heavy metal poisoning. We had her tested for that. Nothing came back. Um, I, I believe it was a pesticide that we used that she came into contact with and she just did not have the ability to recover and fight, fight that off. Um, but we will never know. Children who were not impacted. Right. We have four other kids who have, who did not have any problems from that. So um, we will never know. We will never know what happened, what caused it, and what caused it to go on for so long. We don't know. Uh, and I've had to learn to let that go. That's just got to be part of it. Um, 
so right about the time that I did not know what to do, I was at my wit's end, could not figure out what I was doing wrong or how to help her or anything. And I was like, this cannot be her life. She cannot live like this. She's been in pain all the time. She can't go to school regularly. None of her clothes fit her. She's like, this is just not, I was unwilling to let her live life like that. Um, and so was my husband. He was devastated. And so right about then, my mom forced me to go to a women's conference. And there I met Mary Lee, who owns Branch Basics. She's one of the co-owners, one of the founders of Branch Basics. And let me just tell them what Branch Basics is. Okay. Mary Lee also had a child who was environmentally poisoned, but she didn't know what was wrong with him. In fact, she told that he would always be efficient. He had toxins in his body, and that was just the way his life was going to be. And she, too, was a mother who was not going to accept that. So she started delving into tremendous research to save her child. Who, and so she created this amazing cleaning product that I use, that I love, and that's how I met Linda, called Branch Basic, and they're plant and on the toxicity scale that EWC, which measures toxicity and all this, one. So there's nothing in it that will harm anyone. In fact, we actually made salad dressing out of it one night accidentally. Mm -hmm. and I, I knew something was wrong because I wasn't tasting the vinegar, but neither of us got sick. We just stopped using that as our salad. <laughs> it is so clean, but I use it to wash my dishes, to do my laundry, to wash my floors, to do my toilets, because I don't have children, but I have pets, and I don't want them to get poisoned, and I love this stuff. So she was meeting the mm -hmm. owner of this company who had a yeah. similar journey with her child, who now was being able to share with Lindsay, and she's very giving and very loving, and she wanted to help. Okay. Yes, and she sat with me for a very long time and went through the whole thing. With me and she was like this is what you need to do you have got to get the chemicals out of your house and you've got her laundry is that was like one of the main focuses was her laundry you've got to get her out of she's living in a, a toxic soup all the time she's she's going to school in it she's sleeping in it she's laying on the couch in it everything and she has no rest. There's no rest for her body to be able to recover from this. And I was like, oh my God. So I went home that weekend, threw everything out, replaced it all. And I, I have, um, it has been a process, um, but we have replaced toothpaste, toothbrushes, shampoos, oh, wow. makeup, nail polish. We have replaced everything, my kids and me, we all still function exactly the way that we used to. We are just using different products that are safe for us. And this kid, th I mean, I want to be very, very clear. This is not magic. It didn't, she did not get better overnight. This did not just like, she is always going to be A and E positive. She is always going to carry an autoimmune disorder with her as she goes along, but this allows her body to rest and recover from that every day. She is able to get up and fight those things and keep it under control by the things that we have in our home and by the things that she's eating. So how did you change your diet in addition to changing the chemicals in so we do, we have, and it's still a journey, we're not perfect, um, but we have used um, real fresh ingredients, fresh vegetables, and that is the majority of what we eat are vegetables. Um, and I mean, you can research a little bit and find out what all you need to have to make sure you're getting all of your vitamins. Um, but we're majorly eating real, nothing, well, we try to do extremely little processed foods. We're still working that out. Um, processed foods and fake, anything that's fake. 
So if there's, if we buy cheese and it says more than cheese on it, we don't get it. <laughs> so, um, and we're doing very little meat. So we're still meat eaters, but just smaller portions. Did you find toxins in other areas of your home and your life that you also started to trade out? Uh, in everything, the, um, what I was using to shampoo my carpets with, or having carpets, period. Um, yeah, that, they're made from toxic things. Exactly. Um, so that, um, we have replaced um, sheets with 100% uh, cotton sheets. Um, our, uh, what we were cleaning our cars with and washing our cars with. Um, I still, there are very few things that I will use, um, that anything that's going to touch my skin because your skin absorbs everything pretty much and goes straight into your body. Right. And that's um, the largest organ, which people don't think about. Right. And so anything that's going to touch my skin or my kid's skin, I am hundred percent, absolutely not going to have chemicals in that. Um, but like we, uh, oh, the compost or the, the stuff we were using just to fill our flower beds with had chemicals in it, which I thought was really surprising. I was like, oh my gosh. So now our city provides free compost from, you know, what we put in the recycle bin. And so I go pick that up and it has nothing in it. They literally just let it sit and make compost. So I just go pick it up from them and and fill my flower beds and grow my little garden from that stuff. And so, I mean, it's kind of, they're very strange things. The type of air filter I was using for my air conditioner had chemicals in it. Why? You know, I mean, why? So I had to find one that was, um, that was natural. And the uh, essential oils, um, I use them for smell. Like, uh, I don't use perfume anymore. So I mix a peppermint essential oil with some water and use that as a spray, as like a body spray every day. But the one that I was using was fake. And all those things that smell have chemicals in them. Have chemicals in them, yes. They're very toxic. Yes. So it's the one that takes the air out, the smell out of your ear, or the ones that you're spraying all over the place, or the oil things you're plugging into your wall, that's poisoning you. Yes, all day you're sitting there, and I have learned to open up my windows and open up my doors and just let the air blow through instead, you know, on days when it's nice. I live in Texas where the heat will kill you. Um, so on days when it's nice, so more, you know, early in the morning at five in the morning, I'll open up those living room windows and just let things air out. I don't need a smell anymore. I don't need, you know, Febreze all the time. Right. So, right. It's good. But it is very interesting the things, the weird things that you find chemicals in that you're thinking, for what? Like, why did you put that there? There was no reason to even have that. But there it is. And watch advertising. There's a new ad where she's smelling her laundry and she's in ecstasy. It makes me crazy because she's poisoning herself every time she does that. But for some reason, those smells sell product because uh, yes. they don't know that they're poisoning themselves. Yes, and you are literally, it's an excitotoxin. You are literally addicted to that smell. And it's just as bad as doing heroin. Like, you are killing yourself with every breath that you're taking. So, yeah, no, it's true. And I was, I was shocked. Everything I looked up was toxic. Everything. Everything that I was touching all day long. And I was like, oh and my gosh. Things like the shampoo in your house? Yes, we had to go find, at first I was using Branch Basics to wash my hair because I was afraid of everything. 
right. I was completely afraid, but I learned, um, you know, to use an app to scan everything to see what I could use, what I could not use. I have some kids that have super curly hair. So learning, like using just plain coconut oil for their curls, um, it's fine. It's fine, you know, and you don't have to go buy the stuff that's in a fancy bottle. Like there's some natural alternatives out there that are not going to hurt you and work just as well. Right. My head was itchy for 20 years. I did not know that's because I was allergic to the synthetical chemicals and all the yes. different shampoos I'd used for those years. Yes. So yes. it was like, oh my God, I've been putting up with this for all the time. For all the time. And one very strange thing, people with children will understand this is, um, little girls get lice what do you use what do you do to get rid of that and i am a crazy person i have got four girls that all have very long hair and um i mean right now like now uh, pediatricians tell you it's not dangerous and there's you shouldn't mess with it or whatever so, but i'm i'm not gonna be walking around with lice so um i was able to find a company who makes a product that is more like conditioner. You can use it every day if you want to. There's nothing you could literally put it in your mouth. It's not going to hurt you. Um, and it is for lice and it works. So I was really excited. I'm like, there's, there's just these odd and end things that you automatically think I need to go get the chemical to kill that, or I need to go do this. And it's a chemical, but there are even better things out there that work better than the chemical alternatives. And so that was really surprising to me. And what happened to the rest of your family when you started to exchange out all these products? So as we are going through all of this, I have one child that has pretty severe asthma. Uh, she has not had an asthma attack in about three years. Um, she did have like a mini episode when we moved from one place to another to a different city. Um, but that was more of, uh, you know, the different environment. That was an environment change, but it was over relatively quickly. We didn't even have to give her medicine for that. She just adjusted. Um, but she has not had an asthma attack in a very long time. She does not take a regular medicine anymore, not even an allergy medicine anymore. Um, my husband has been able to sleep all night long for now, at least for a couple of years, which is very strange. He has never been able to do that in his entire life. He has always slept for like two hours and then he's up for two hours and then he'll sleep for two hours and then he'll go, you know, and it, it has always been like that. Um, mm -hmm. kind of like a newborn, I guess. And it's so much healthier because you need a full, uninterrupted seven hours of sleep. Yes. As you grow older. So yes. And his job is very, um, he's got to have like crazy attention to detail. So him being awake and alert is a very important part of his job. <laughs> um, so that has been able, that has been a huge improvement. That by itself changed his life. Um, I used to have headaches, chronic headaches all the time, and I have not had a problem with that. I am now because I'm looking at the computer screen a hundred times more, just like everybody else. But I have recently gotten blue blockers, um, which are helping. These are helping. Um, and so I would suggest anybody who does have to look at a computer screen for a very long time every day, get you some of those, or if you're always on your phone, get some of those. Um, so that has gone to the wayside. We have a ton more energy. We are, I feel like, with, just with it more. Just alert we're alert yes it's a mental clarity that I didn't even know like you could have I mean do I get tired yes do I get stressed out yes but this is it just feels different I don't feel sick I don't feel sick anymore 
Yeah, one of the things Mary Lee shared with me for a friend who always has headaches is to take all of the cleaning supplies, put them in a big plastic bin, take them out to the garage. Yeah. You need to use it, you bring them in one at a time and you look up the last ingredient on the product because if it's toxic, trust me, everything else everything is. Toxic. And that, that, that's how you start to find replacements product by product because if you start with the lowest, I know I look up every ingredient on everything and it's very tedious. Yes. So it's not user friendly out there to do that. And so yeah. what a great tip in order to start to clean the toxins out of your life. Yes. Yes. So you obviously were doing re product replacement with lower toxin products step by step because it can't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight, and I did not want to overload myself uh, and get so fed up and stressed out that I didn't do it, because that's what would happen, and that's what happens to most people. They get, they feel, they put all this pressure on it, and they feel like they have to do it right now, and it all has to, you know, but that's not the way you have to, nobody thinks that you need to do it that way. Do one thing at a time, one step at a time. Don't get stressed out about it. Just let it flow naturally. Just let it happen naturally. And it's fine. Just don't quit. Nobody quit. Yeah, no, just keep going. Yeah. I, okay, I'm going to jump and change subjects for a minute. How much of the food that your family eats do you make? How much of it do you cook or make from scratch? I would say a good 80% a good 80%. Some weeks are better than others, depending on what's going on. Um, but I do really try to make everything that I possibly can, that I have time for. And I'm one of my big goals from, for next year, one of my personal goals is to get organized and uh, time block these things to make the time for it because I do have time for it there's I have at least 30 hours a week where I'm just sitting around but I am saying I don't have time for stuff and so I know that I do have time to do it and I need to self-motivate <laughs> let's say you walk into the kitchen how long does it take generally to get dinner on the table oh less than 45 minutes yeah less that's Once it's there, don't understand. You yes. get into a rhythm, and yes. so it really doesn't take any longer than jumping in the car, packing up all the family, and going no. out and eating something that's not so healthy for your family. Yes, it doesn't take more time to go go into the kitchen and do it once you get the rhythm of cooking and you aren't afraid. Yes. To cook. And it is it is not any more expensive than going out to eat. That is one thing is a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, look at the price. And I'm like, right, but you meal plan. You have to meal plan and know where you're going. You're not wasting any ingredients. And for my size family, especially, it's extremely expensive to eat out, extremely expensive. And so being able to do those things at home where I know where everything's coming from, is a whole lot better. Yeah, having the control of knowing what you're putting into your body yes, yes. is so important. But I get a lot of resistance from people on that mm -hmm. because we've become a society around convenience. Yes. But we also, that's why our kids are all sick. That's why yeah. we're the seventh in the world in health. We, but it is very convenient. Right. If you are if you meal plan and you are organized in this way and you can get it set up, which I'm still working on and I'm working on this situation. Um, if you do it, it is way more convenient. It like, if you're going to make spaghetti sauce and you know, like I'm going to have spaghetti three times this month, make enough spaghetti sauce to have it three times and just divide it up. And like, you don't ever have to do that again this month. You know what I mean? Like, there's just got to be some thought behind it, and it becomes very convenient. Right. That's fantastic. Yeah. So tell me about how your daughter, she's, this all started when she was three. Mm -hmm. She is now 10. Why don't you flash forward and tell us how she's doing now? So now 
Kate is 10 years old, um, 10 and a half, she likes to say. Um, and the kid, she is, she is thin. She likes, she's gonna be, that's not gonna be, but she is obviously not sick. She runs around probably more than anybody else in our family. She is like a get up and go kind of girl. Um, she's uh, riding her bike. She's jumping on trampolines. She's, you know, fighting with the kids down the street. She is playing volleyball and baseball and everything that she possibly can do from the time she gets up to the time she goes to bed. She does not have any pain ever. Um, she is actually eating, which before was a problem. She wouldn't even eat. Um, she does not have a growing problem. She's growing just fine. Um, all of her hair came back. It's lovely. <laughs> um, it's really important. It really is. I know that that probably sounds stupid to people, but for a girl, it, it's really important. Um, that was that was a really hard for her to lose her hair. Um, and I came back thicker and curlier than before. Um, and she, I mean, she's like a crazy person, just like wild. She's wild out there, which is something when all of this started, I never thought was going to happen. I never thought she would be able to even live like a normal life. I thought she was going to be like an inside kid in a bubble, living in a bubble. That's what I thought. And now she's a normal, energetic, fantastic 10 year old. Girl. She is a crazy girl out there. Yes. I have, I'm like literally having to drag her home every night and it's, it's a mess. She is a mess and which is wonderful. It's wonderful. It's exactly how 10 year olds should be. It's, she drives everybody crazy and she's, one minute she's out rolling around in the dirt, the next minute she's inside painting her fingernails. So she's, it's great. It's great. I could not have asked for a better recovery. She will always be ANA positive. She will always have something inside of her. And it's something I'm trying to teach her to be aware of her body and what is going on. And if she is in pain or if she has a fever or if something is going on, she has to be able to recognize those things and course correct. Um, so I'm trying to teach her to be very aware. Um, so this isn't magic, but it is helping her to live a much better quality of life. Now, when you started changing how you were cooking and feeding your family, did you cook separately for her than you did for the rest of the I family? I didn't. I okay. didn't. Any resentment from the rest of the family that they were going to eat this new different food? Well, I tried to involve them. And so uh, I would take them shopping. Um, there's a lot of them. I just, there's so many of them <laughs> that... I, do, I am not cooking two different meals or four different meals every day. I, that's not going to happen. So what I cook is what you have. If that is not what you want, figure out a way to cook yourself something. Have a sandwich, whatever. Um, so that's kind of always been my rule is I don't, I don't cook more than one meal at dinner time. And then I try to involve them like, this, I, I have taught them how to grocery shop, like what things cost and how, like what you should be looking for in the cost. And, um, you have them reading labels. Here. I do. I have them reading labels. The, the kids that I have that have phones are scanning stuff as they go along. Um, my youngest one yeah. is like very, she's very vocal. And she'll tell people, other people who are shopping, that's full of chemicals, and that's so bad for you. And I'm like, oh my God, shut up. Like, that's somebody else's life. We're not getting involved <laughs> in somebody else's stuff. Um, I'm like, sorry, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I try to involve them as much as I can. My older kids, I actually have cooking now, which we're at a wonderful time in life where they can do that stuff, and I don't have to that's do fun. it. They're all cooking with you. That will serve them well. Yeah. Well, 
they are not cooking with me. I'm trying to teach them to read a recipe and follow it and do it or whatever themselves without my help. So sometimes they fail and that's just what it is. Um, but we're just, I'm, I'm learning to like let all of this go. So they, they are cooking, they are picking out what we're going to eat. I'm trying to teach them how to meal plan and things of that nature so that they know how to do this for the rest of their lives. And whether they choose to continue with it or not is up to them, but they will have the tools to do it. Should they? The right foundation. Yeah. Yeah. How old is your oldest child? She's 13. Okay. Yes, I have a 13, 12, two 10 year olds, and a seven year old. So they're all smashed in there together. When I ask, because I have met moms who cook different for one child and then the family gets to eat all the crud. Well, I don't feel like that's fair. I, well, and I don't think it's healthy. I think yeah. that, you know, if you're going to cook healthy food for one child, why not let the entire family benefit from that? Yeah. But that's a mindset change. Right. And I also did not, whenever we first started doing this, I also wasn't um, saying like, oh, this is um, healthier and like this doesn't have all this stuff in it. I wasn't saying that. I was saying this is what we're having for dinner. Like there's, you're not, you don't have choice. You don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. This is what I'm making. And it, it it's our food. It's our food. And that's how we just started it after we had been doing that for a while. And they complain, they complain about different junk that they don't want to, you know they don't like brussels sprouts well i don't like brussels sprouts either <laughs> it ta they taste like metal to me so i just don't but uh there are things that they do like and i only make food that they do like that i know that they like and you know should they decide that day they don't like it well that's too bad right 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 so they're all plenty old enough. If you want to have yourself a bowl of cereal for dinner, good for you, you know. Talk to me about school lunches. Do they take their food with them? They do. They make their own lunches. They are responsible for making their own lunches. I don't pack them for them. Um, so I give them options. I buy the food, obviously and the, it is there, so they are allowed to make whatever they want, or they can pack leftovers from the night before, however they want to do it. Um, we don't drink juice or anything, so they only take waters to school. Um, with this COVID stuff happening right now, the school ha uh, wants them to eat the lunch that they provide, <clears throat> so in order for them to be able to go back to school, I'm following the rules right now. And that's, it's just something I, we're just, that's just what's gonna happen right now. And that's gotta be okay. Um, but generally they do take their own lunches and they are responsible for making it themselves. So it's a pretty good deal, I think. It is school lunch It is, it is. Um, relatively healthy. It is coming from local sources um, and it is cooked in the school. So it is, it's good. They don't like it is more the thing, but there's a fruit, there's a vegetable and there's some kind of, it's a, like enchiladas or whatever. So, but yeah, it's mostly local and it's all cooked right there. So it's not processed food, so. Right. Which is great. Yeah. Um, when they're around other children and not with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, it isn't usually, they think it's really fun that they get to have um, juice at other places. <laughs> or, um, you know, the different kind of popsicles, like other people will have different kind of popsicles or ice cream, um, or they have candy. We don't have candy at home anymore. So um, they think that those things are fun. Without restrictions from eating stuff when they're 
I don't because I want them to um, to be able to sit and have meals with other people. And they're all still kind of young to where I don't want them having to take food <clears throat> for overnight somewhere. And so they're so kind, they're just at a weird age, I guess. And I don't want, I what my son is allergic to peanuts. And so that's already an issue for people is like, oh, he's allergic to peanuts. So we can't, have, and I'm like, I think it's a, it's, he's, he's good about it. He, like, you don't have to monitor him. Um, so I don't, I don't make them take food to other people's homes. They are allowed to eat whatever they're going to eat there. Um, usually when they come home, they don't feel good. So I'm like, that's a little bit of a lesson, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it's funny whenever they stay like multiple days with people and they come home, they're like, my stomach hurts so bad. And I'm like, yeah, what did you eat while you were gone? <laughs> you know? That's a, my daughter has, she'll take like her own snacks there, but she won't, like a meal, she won't take her own. So, yeah. So, now I want to, and your daughter that's 10 that was terribly sick, now we know she's really feeling, <laughs> she still is aware though that she was that sick, right? So she's more confident. Yes. Yes, she 100% remembers everything <clears throat> that happened. Because she was weird. So, so, yeah. Yes, and she can tell you even now, like, what that felt like, what it felt like to stand up and to, for everything to be hurting. She can tell you all about it. Um, so, and she knows that different things are going to affect her different ways and so she is a lot more um cautious like when she's at school if she gets hurt or something um she tells the nurse I need you to call my mom and make sure like this is okay and they will they'll call me and they're like she's asking because she needs a band-aid or whatever and I'm like she okay it's okay she's just going overboard but she's afraid that something is gonna hurt her so you know, it's fine, but she is extremely aware that she is not allowed to touch certain cleaning products at all. Like, she is not allowed at all anywhere near them. Um, and she's pretty uh, vocal with people about it. Like, get that away from me. I don't want to be in contact with that stuff. Don't get it on my skin. Don't get it on my clothes, you know, so... And she had, COVID cleaning, that has not been an issue? So at school, it has become an issue because they want her to use hand sanitizer. And they want her to um, wipe her own desk off with bleach and stuff. So I had to go meet with the teacher and give her a small bottle of the Branch Basics foaming stuff and tell her, you know, this is what she's going to use instead of the hand sanitizer. I understand where you're coming from, but you have to understand she's going to have a panic attack if you make her use hand sanitizer. <laughs> um, and she, she, it, it does. There's so many chemicals in hand sanitizer. Yes. And so um, I was like, you know, there is reason, like I can get her doctor to write you guys a note or whatever we need to explain this they thankfully understood and so the teacher is not having her wipe her desk down um i i've asked if we could use branch basics on the desk they won't allow that but they aren't making her do it and it is at least being dried before she is sitting there so i'm still like when she gets home from school i'm like you need to take a shower right now before and like let's get all that off of you and as fast as we can. Our research, hot soapy water kills the virus yes. better than most of those nasty cleaning things that they're using. Yes. It breaks down the membrane of the virus and kills it. Yes. So, yeah. and that's, that's 
toxic at all as long as you're using a non-toxic soap. Right. And that's been a whole nother conversation with people is like, we're, we are not going to use antibacterial soap. I don't, I don't use the soap here in my office. I bring my own, it's a little bitty bottle, you know, and I use my own soap and things like that. And I am, I have not gotten sick. I haven't, you know, I'm sure I will at some point. I'm sure all of us will get it at some point, but it's got it. I still have to do what I think is right. I actually have a little soap that I, that is a bottle that I carry in my pocket. Because yes. bathroom soaps make me break out in a rash on my hands. Almost immediately. So it is a soap. It has essential oils in it. And I use that instead of any of that. I always have it on my body. Yes. And so it's just, and it's just those kinds of things where you just have to pre-plan, I guess, that, and you make it work for your life. And like a couple of times you forget that soap and you have to use bathroom soap and your hands break out and you're like, I have got to remember to put that in my purse, right. you know, <laughs> so. The same way. Yes. So, yeah, and so, people know that too, right? Yes. Yes. They do not use and I mean, it's funny standing in a public bathroom and they're like, mom, I can't use this soap. Where's the soap? You know, and I'm like, people look at you weird and I'm like, we're using soap. Calm down. Like we're just using our own soap. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, But it's, you're also not afraid to stand up for yourself and say, no, we don't do that. We do this. We're going to do this. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's, like I've tried to work with the school, I've tried to work with the teachers so that like I am not against you doing what you're doing. I understand why you're doing it, but my kid has to do it this way because she's got a problem, you know? And so it's the same thing that you would do for a kid that has a peanut allergy by not giving him peanuts. You're just protecting this kid from getting sick by not giving them chemicals that's all i'm asking for and they have allowed me for the most part to let her use what she needs to use so i'm thankful for that um is there anything else you would like everybody out there to know about your journey that you think might be helpful for them i would say don't give up um, if you feel like you have failed at it, um, if you feel like you're making all of the mistakes that you can make, that is okay. Everybody does. Everybody has made all of the mistakes. Nobody is perfect at it 100% of the time. Do what you can, when you can, and um, just be aware of like, just because it says on the label that it's clean and safe doesn't mean that it is. Know what you're buying, know what you're putting on and in your body. Um, and yeah, you discuss, don't, the EPA keeps putting out lists of cleaning solutions that are good to kill COVID, but take yeah. the responsibility to look them up because most of what they've approved is a D on the toxicity. Yes. So just because yes. something says you can use this doesn't mean that that's what you should use. That that's what you should use. And you have to take responsibility for yourself. Nobody is going to come in and save you. Nobody is going to give you the answers that you're looking for. Um, this is not, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It is not a magic pill. It is not anything like that. It is a choice that you're going to make over and over and over again. And you're going to, you know, course correct. You're going to find different things that work. You're going to do all that. It's always a learning process, no matter what, you're always going to be learning and finding out more things. Don't be too hard. Don't put so much pressure on yourself or on your spouse to change all of these things at one time. Take your time and do it right. You know, just let it let things happen and let yourself learn the lessons and you don't have to wait until you're sick or until your kid is sick you can do it just because you want to feel better or just because you don't want this stuff in your life you don't have to be sick to make these changes 
And something you shared with me before we started filming is don't feel guilty for what you didn't know. Don't feel guilty. Yes. Because there's a million things I didn't know. There's a million things I still don't know. And that's okay. That is okay. Because I can only do what's in front of me and that's it. <laughs> so I can't take responsibility for, you know, what my grandma, and my mom taught me, which was what they thought was best. And I'm thankful for those things. They thought those things were the best thing. And I, I've changed my mind on those things and I'm teaching my kids something different and they may change their mind. I don't know, but I know that this is what we're going to do right now. Right. You do the best you can do. Yes. And you'll see it in the health of your body and your spouse's body and the, and the health of yes. your children. Yes. You'll the, know you're making good decisions or you'll know if you need to adjust some more. Exactly. And see, I, I saw it very quickly in Caitlin very quickly she started to recover but it took my like my husband just being like why haven't you gone and filled prescriptions for these other kids why haven't you know and he kept he kept saying like man I'm sleeping good and that kind of stuff you know and I'm like these things are weird like why is this stuff happening it took me a, like an embarrassing amount of time to connect the dots on like what was happening you know and I was like oh my god this is really changing. And I can tell, like, when we stay in a hotel, we don't sleep. Uh, when I go certain places, I don't feel good, you know? And I know that those are, that's a direct result of just the chemicals that are around. Right. And once you're aware, then you pick it up much more quickly. Yes. You're not aware, you're just confused. Why do I feel so loud? Yes. Like, I guess that's just how it's supposed to go. That's what everybody tells you. Like, you're just getting older or, you know, what, like, I mean, uh, everybody used to tell me, well, you just have a lot of kids and you're tired from that. Your body doesn't feel good because you've had a lot of kids, you know, like get over it. And that's just the way things are going to be. And I was like, oh, okay. it it's not how it has to be. And I'm like, there are definitely uh, effects from having kids that I, that I am going to have to live with, <laughs> um, but not, not the, what I was feeling before, a hundred percent, not what I was feeling before. No. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have met you, and this interview is going to go out in some different segments because some of our pre-conversation was so juicy. <laughs> that I'm going to want to plug it in. Yeah. So you'll probably see in this tape that there are places where there were changes in the conversation, but it's so filled with important information. I don't want anybody to miss any of it. Okay. I'm really excited. I'm so glad that you contacted me. I was like, oh my God. I knew I wanted Weird. to see So yeah, Marilee, Marilee and I are becoming friendly and I am very grateful for her friendship. Oh, I love her so much. We researched in different areas mm -hmm. and so together we have a whole pool of information that is even more powerful when there's the two of us. So. Yes, I love her so much. She's so, she's just got so much information that's just like, and for Just anybody who wants comes out of it. more about Marilee's business, it's called Branch Basics, and she has bar none the best blog on environmental toxins out there. Yes. So go to her website and noodle around because you're going to find information that will blow you away that you had no idea about. Um, and so by all means, utilize the information and try her product. I instantly fell in love with her product, mm -hmm. and um, I've been using it almost since I first got autoimmune disease. I was lucky that I found it early, and it changed the whole way that I cleaned my home. So, it's amazing. I love, I love the product. I cannot, I buy it for my clients. When they close on a house, I buy them 
starter sets and just start them off that way. And I just love it so much. I believe in it. I really do. I know. And it's amazing how passionate we become when something really does what it's supposed to. I know. And if you follow them on Facebook and Instagram, they are always in their stories showing you different ways to use it too. So like things you didn't think about. So it's really interesting. So follow them on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, so thank you so much. It's oh been yes, a pleasure. Thank you. I'm very, very. I'm really excited to see this. How it turns out. <laughs>